I have a confession to make. Actually, I think of it more as a badge of honor. For I am a green bubble. I send those green bubble text messages to my family of iPhone users with pride. <laughs> And now I have another reason to convert my iPhone love and fam over to Android because RCS is getting more and more secure. <laughs> my plans are working. Okay, jokes aside, here's what's going on. Although I have never personally experienced it firsthand, apparently there's this huge rift between blue bubbles, which are iMessage users on iPhones, and green bubbles, which is literally the rest of the world. I have never been judged, at least to my face, by any iMessage users. Maybe it's because everybody I surround myself and talk to are pretty mature folks, at least when it matters. So we don't really care if you use iMessage or Google Messages. We still talk to each other. As long as we can text back and forth, we're good. But apparently some people do judge others based on the color of their messages. Is it a perceived bias about financial status? Are Androids perceived as cheap? Because I can tell you firsthand that they are not cheap. Or does it simply have to do with features and the lack of performance when texting somebody of the other side of the smartphone ecosystem. Now there are truly some limitations. This is because iMessage and Google Messages use different types of protocols and they don't communicate well with each other. For example, if somebody sends a message from one iPhone to another iPhone using iMessage, both of those users are going to get end-to-end -end encryption, they get read receipts, they get high-res photos and videos, reaction emojis, and and more. If an Android user sends another Android user a message using Google Messages, both of those devices also get end-to-end -end encryption, high-res photos, read receipts, etc. iMessages get sent via Apple's messaging protocol, and Google's messages get sent as Google's form of RCS, or Rich Communication Service Protocol. Now, both of these protocols work great, but only when they are being used to communicate with somebody using the same protocol. This is is why if you text somebody on another platform, you don't get to see the pretty read receipts. Your photos and videos get sent in low resolution. They look like potatoes. You see their reactions as Jenny left at an image rather than just seeing their emoji reaction and your text color is different. Now, unfortunately, Apple has point blank said that they won't be adopting the RCS protocol. They don't want to make it easier or more secure for you to text your Android family. They just just want everybody to buy iPhones. I am not even kidding. This is literally what Tim Cook has stated and it is on record. So in my opinion, this is totally my opinion, this refusal to adopt a protocol that Apple has been invited to use is very anti-privacy because this is the important bit. Every single time you send somebody a message from an iPhone and they're on Android or vice versa, you're on Android and you send one to an iPhone, every single one of those messages is not encrypted if you're sending it via the default messaging service. It is downgraded to SMS or MMS, which is widely used, but it's old and it can be intercepted. This is also why all those high-tech features get downgraded too. So your photos look like a potato and so on and so forth. This is the same reason why we in the security community recommend upgrading your two-factor authentication to an app or a hardware key. And I have done videos on these if you want more information because 2FA code codes are sent via SMS and SMS is vulnerable. The only way you can really get around this issue right now is by using a third party app like Signal. But both you and the receiver have to have that app installed in order to get those messages to be encrypted. And Signal does not even support SMS anymore, so you would still need a different application to send messages cross platform to other people that don't have Signal installed. But that way you can get those encrypted messages from an iPhone to an Android and vice versa, assuming you both have Signal installed. However, it is hard to get people to use a third-party app for anything, especially when you are so ingrained in an ecosystem. It is hard to give up using iMessage. It is hard to give up using Google Messages. But Android devices are heading in a more secure direction, with this month 
being a big deal for security and privacy fans, and this news is a long time coming. Now, I'm assuming if you watch this far that you're worried about your privacy, and if so, you are not alone. In today's digital world, our personal information is constantly being collected and shared. Sometimes it's pretty creepy. Like, have you seen an ad for something that you have never mentioned online? Sometimes that can be kind of convenient, like our smoker grill just died and my husband was seeing ads for new ones hours later. That's creepy, but apparently there was a sale going on, so useful? You may not be actively typing this information into websites, but websites use sets of data about you to create a profile picture of who you are. They know that we have a smoker because we buy pellets for it on Amazon. Our information is more vulnerable than ever before, and that's why it's so important to take steps to protect our privacy. One of the ways to do this is by using Delete Me. Delete Me is a service that helps you remove your personal information from the internet, and they are sponsoring this episode. They create a first line of defense by sending requests to websites and data brokers to remove your information. You don't have to lift a finger. Everything happens through Delete Me, and they send you a report every quarter showing their results. I have used Delete Me for years. They've given me very positive results, and they keep on adding new sites to their list of offenders. They keep tabs on my information so that I don't have to. And anytime they see it pop up on sites like Spokio or PeopleFinder or any of those people search databases, they send the opt-out request for me. You can use the code SNUBS at checkout, that's S-N-U-B-S, whenever you go over to Delete Me for 20% off any of their consumer plans, or you can just click the link below, that's joindeleteme.com slash Morse code to sign up today, and that code will automatically apply at checkout. Sign up now, safeguard your personal information today, and huge thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. So back in April, Google announced that they were rolling out end-to-end -end encryption for RCS group chats. Yay! While E2EE, or end-to-end -end encryption, was available for one-on-one -on -one conversations for quite some time, this part was a big deal. Shortly after this, in July, Google announced that they were rolling out messaging layer security, or MLS, adoption. That means that Google Messages will now support end-to-end -end encryption across any platform and third-party apps that also support MLS. Now, MLS support can improve upon group messaging privacy too, because everybody could receive secure messages from a group text on their own MLS-friendly app of choice. Since this can be implemented across many different apps and platforms, Google is also open sourcing their implementation in the Android code base. Now, hopefully this means a rollout will ensure more end-to-end -end encryption options, whether your friend is using Google Messages or some other application on their own Android device. But this is just on Androids. Now for the geeks, this is MLS specification RFC 9420 if you wanna look it up. And just this month, Google announced that all all RCS conversations in messages are now encrypted by default. That includes group chats. RCS is now enabled by default for new and existing users, unless it was turned off by the user for some reason in the settings. Now, if you think at one time, oh, maybe I did turn that off. Did I turn it off? You can actually check if RCS is enabled. Open your Google Messages app, click on your photo icon, click Messages Settings, and then click RCS Chats at the top. This will show you if it's enabled and you can turn it on from this page. You can also check if each of your conversations is end-to-end -end encrypted as well. So from a conversation, you can click the little hamburger icon, click details, and then see the status of a specific conversation right at the top. You will notice that any companies that send you text messages about deliveries or 2FA security codes or login requests, those are not sent encrypted. Those are sent via SMS, AKA texting. So a big takeaway is to, again, upgrade your 2FA to app-based or hardware keys, and also be skeptical and cautious about any messages that are sent via SMS. This is a really big way that phishing and credential stealing can happen if, by example, attackers send you a text pretending to be a company saying like, you had a missed delivery, click here to verify your address or something like that. They get you to click on a link 
to send you to a malicious site or a phishing site that is set up to steal your data. Now with these steps in the right direction that Google's making to help users keep their messages private and confidential, we can see how fluid and convenient that security can be. Sure, some folks may have a need that threat modeling for a third party app for encryption, and they don't want to use Google's app that comes pre-installed. But most folks don't want to install another app for messaging, at least not here in the United States. I realize that WhatsApp is very popular across the pond though. Anything that provides better security for an average user so that they don't even need to think about it is a positive step in my book. The encryption should just happen. It shouldn't be an optional setting that you have to find and enable manually. So, I am quite happy to be a green bubble. I don't think that we should judge others by the colors of our bubbles, but we should be criticizing brands and companies for not putting our security and privacy first. Google is certainly a big offender, and I'm not saying that they aren't, when it comes to using personal data for targeted ads and search, but credit where credit is due in terms of enabling default encryption and open sourcing projects for other manufacturers. Sure, they can't force any other brand Apple to play ball for cross-platform encryption, but they have issued an olive branch and they have made steps to make that happen. Now I'm curious, do you feel the same? Do you think that cross-platform built-in and defaulted encryption should be the norm? Sound off down in the comments and subscribe if you like deep thought analysis about security like this video, because I like to go deep sometimes. Thank you again so much to Delete Me for sponsoring. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.